At the very end of November, coincidentally on the day where I uploaded the last part of this Let's Play, Neverland, the company that created the Lufia games, declared bankruptcy. Neverland was also responsible for making the acclaimed Rune Factory series. Now, I don't know much about the Rune Factory series myself, and I had gotten to the Lufia series pretty late since like 2010, 2009, when I finally got into the series. But having now been experiencing what the Lufia games are like, this feels kind of hollow for me. To know that Neverland has now closed its doors and is no longer going to attempt to carry the magic that it once did. The IP for Lufia is kind of up in the air. Don't even know who's has at this point, and if the series will even continue from this point onward. What is a shame now? I skipped on this LP out of laziness, but now that I've heard about this, I kind of feel like I owe it to myself. And the fact that this game is great, that I should. I definitely have to finish this Let's Play now. Mage Knight 404 here, welcoming you back to Let's Play Lufia, Curse of the Sinistrals. I'm just gonna skip the formalities. Let's just go back to Grazia Empire and fulfill the next event. Previously, we have prevented Leafa from committing suicide by going up into the mountains all by herself in the cold by drugging her. Thank you, Iris. As such, we ended up getting the flower for her, and as a result, killed a lot of time. So now that we've done our stint as flower collectors, and presumably Tia now has frostbite, Leon is actually still waiting in the Grazie Empire guest room. So let's pay him a visit, chat him up, and just, you know, like exchange pleasantries or something. Thank you for coming, Decker. There's already a bit of trouble. What do you mean, your highness? The Ruby Angel, which was a gift from King Ju to celebrate the wedding, has been stolen. Uh-oh. What?! We thought we had safely hidden the Ruby Angel, but it suddenly disappeared. What should we do? Do not worry, your highness. I will take care of it. Thank you, Decker. I am once again in your debt. Think nothing of it, your highness. We will begin the search for the Ruby Angel immediately. Again, I can't thank you enough, Decker. Say, Maxim, maybe we can ask Jaffe about the Ruby Angel. That's what I was thinking, too. Jaffe? Who's Jaffe? A sculptor in Parcelite. He's an expert glassblower and made us an exact copy of the Ruby Apple when it was stolen. I'm sure he can make us a perfect replica of the Ruby Angel. Ah, I gotcha! So we'd leave the duplicate here while we go look for the real Ruby Angel! Yep. Alright, let's head to Parcelite, then. So here's where the Dan Aurelio subplot finally kicks in. In the original, Aurelio gave an item called the Ruby Icon over to Dan Kirk as a showing of goodwill, but someone ended up making off with it. So Maxim actually had an idea to go see Jaffe to see if he can make a forgery out of it. So you actually have to go back to see him. The problem is that the game doesn't tell you that about this, so you actually had to go and remember the offhand that Jaffe makes glass sculptures. Please head to Parcelite, Doc. Parcelite? Why? Did something happen there? I need to ask Jaffe for his help. Alright, I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but let's go! Let's hurry! We must see the expert glassblower so his shining wisdom can, uh, help us out. Yo, Jaffe, what's up? I'm here to talk, bro, not, uh, your pleasantries. Hey there, Maxim. Long time no see. Jaffe, I need to ask you a favor. Can you make a ruby angel for us? You mean like the ruby angel I made for the Grazi Empire? Huh, <laughs> so you made that too? Yes, but getting your hands on a ruby that size isn't easy. Well, that's why we've come to ask you to make a glass one like you did for the ruby apple. No problem, but what do you need it for? Well, we can't really say why, but without the statue, there could be trouble in the Grazi Empire. Hmm, sounds serious. I gotcha. I'll make a replica of the ruby angel for you. Well, that was nice. Quick and easy. What the hell, Jaffa? Are you making a statue or an atom bomb? There. All done. That was really quickly. Holy crap, Jaffa, you work fast. Wait, you're already finished? You truly are a genius, Jaffa. 
people who have mastered their crap possess truly unbelievable abilities. Wow, that's amazing! It looks just like the real thing! Except I've never actually seen the real thing before. You've never seen it?! Look <laughs> at his face! I'm like, oh, why?! How am I not surprised? Here you go. If you need anything else, please let me know. Thanks, Jaffe! Class Angel received! Also, yeah, we kind of glossed over that last bit. Uh, we can actually go to Jaffe and he can combine Mystic Stones for us. Might as well go over this real quick. It works like this. Basically, you have to take two Mystic Stones. One to use as a base, and one to use as materials to upgrade the base. When you combine the two, the base Mystic Stone will gain experience, air quotes, and level up. And all the stat bonuses the Mystic Stone offers will go up with it. Mystic Stones can only go up to four levels. One being green, two being yellow, three being orange, and four being red. Two Mystic Stones of the same level will guarantee that the base Mystic Stone will level up from it. And conversely, combining a higher Mystic Stone with a lower one will yield less experience points. It's pretty simple to figure out once you mess with it a little. I don't usually do this for the main game, but it's nice to do it if you have some extra stones lying around, and almost a must if you want to get through the ancient cave intact. Of course, this only applies for blue text mystic stones, but that goes without saying. It's not that expensive either, so if you're looking to break the game, come on down, Jaffe's willing to help you. Grab a crowbar. I guess I can boost one more, because why not? Check it. Look at them. Look at them glisten like colors of a rainbow. A really limited rainbow, but a rainbow nonetheless! So let's look at the shiny new toys we have. Look at that. Look at that beautiful yellow sheen. Isn't it just wonderful? So now that we have the glass angel, let's go back to Grazi! Did you meet with Jaffe? Sure did! Take a look at this, Doc! The that's the Ruby Angel statue! The Grazi Empire's national treasure! How did you get your hands on this? <laughs> Even fooled you, Professor. This should work quite nicely. Huh? What are you talking about? This glass statue is a fake, made by Jaffe. It's a fake? I've seen the real thing and even I can't tell them apart. Well, just goes to show you. Yeah, Jaffe's a super genius or something. But why do you need a fake statue? Well, it's kind of complicated. Anyway, we need to go back to the Grazi Empire now, Doc. Gotcha! Let's head back now. Uh, I better bring a jacket this time. I wonder what it's like to be a guy that makes stuff out of glass or another such object or material. I wonder how the process works. So many mysteries. But none that matter right now, let's just go give this to Leon. Who you are, your highness? The, this is made of glass? It looks just like the real thing. Jaffe really is a genius. Yeah. Your highness, use this until we find the real one. We will definitely find it. I understand. I'm counting on you, Decker. Yes, your highness. We'll have to search the entire kingdom. Yeah, guess that's our only choice. There's some suspicious looking places around here, though. Yeah, we should start by looking there. Looking there we shall, because now you gotta go find a perpetrator. So whenever we we were trying to look at this little place and we were told to pretty much screw off, now uh, we have free access to the Grazi Factory. A 
weapons facility? Yeah, who knew? Hey, you! What are you doing? You're not allowed in here! Uh, what should we do? Leave it to me. Just follow along. Oh boy, here we go. Gotcha. Identify yourselves! It's not my style to answer a question like that with a simple answer. I am Decker, the man with a hundred special moves! And that's Guy, the strike first and think later man of pure muscle! Next up is Maxim, the burning swordsman! That's Tia, the girl with the mysterious giant hook! And lastly, Salon, the magical wife! Yes, really. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Wait, Decker, what's with my title? The magical wife? Yeah, what's with mine? Strike first and think later? You make me sound like an idiot! Mine sounds cool and lame at the same time. The girl with the mysterious giant hook? Well, I guess that's kind of true, actually. Hmm, I did not expect such criticism. <laughs> oh my god, Decker, I love you. <laughs> Do you think you can insult me like that? Prepare yourselves! Uh-oh. Oh! Holy balls. It's a tank! Hey, Decker, things just took a turn for the worse here. That's odd. I thought he'd run away after hearing our introductions. What kind of fool would run away after hearing that? Speaking of running away, we need to run away from that tank, and fast! As well as you should, for now we have a chase sequence within the Grazi factory. That tank is completely invincible from any attack you throw at it, and it has anti-armor rounds and a close-range mortar, which do a lot of damage, so you don't want to get hit. Though, curiously, both of them are considered explosion damage, so Guy with Commando is actually really good here. Anywho, the plan here is that you have to run away from this tank and fast, as it constantly locks onto your position and shoots its anti-armor rounds at you. The plan of action here is you're trying to look for a way out, and all of a sudden, Golden Bees will start harassing you along the way. The tank's anti-armor rounds will do friendly fire against the bees, which is nice, but you still won't get experience out of it if it manages to kill them. The anti-armor rounds can also break down those crates that you're seeing lying around, those green crates. Coincidentally, so can Guy's special attack. Some of the crates can actually feature like a healing item or two, so if you want to waste some time to bust open those crates, go right ahead. While there was no Grazi factory in the original, there was a tank, and you did fight it as a boss. Very surprisingly, it was actually fairly vulnerable to physical attacks. It was really resistant to magic, though. Grazi is really weird when it comes to their military tech, I find. I guess you could argue it was magically enhanced or something. We have to keep running around until we run into a wall. A wall that opens up a text box, mind. Hey, isn't this way a dead end? I don't know! Just run for it! I can dodge it! I can do anything! As you just saw, the tank will end up blowing a hole through the shutters using its anti-armor rounds. So just go right through it, and eventually you'll reach a ladder, and there's a switch! Hitting the switch will cause those two shutters to drop, and allow you to advance onward. Climb up the chute so you can go back out and find another switch that will open up platforms for allowing you to descend to the next floor. Oh, I'm dumb. There's an item in that previous room that I was just about to go into. But nope, gotta go through outside because duh, I'm I'm smart, guys. And I really need to remember the layout of this game better. But oh no, have more of me being a bonehead. Herder. 
Also, Jesus, that tank's motor sounds really, really obnoxious. Kinda like me! Eh. Here we are. Power Genem! Wonderful. All of that time wasted just for a Mystic Stone. Fantastic. Now let's stop, stop being silly and actually progress. Where is that way? What the? Hey, hey! Out of the way, Robo Rouser! I need to get this so I can hit the switch back here. And bingo! That activates that platform, so now we can leave this room and this tank. Hot diggity dog. Out of my way. Whoa! Yeah, there's a nice example of the tank's borders. That's why you never get close. Don't try this at home, kitties, or you're gonna get charred skin all over. And a hole for your stomach. And you're probably dead, so, uh... Let's get out of here already. Oh, look who it is. Ha! We did it! Man, stealing the Ruby Angel was way more easy than I thought it'd be. You're so great, Birdie, but it seems a little too easy, don't you think? Nah, we're just that awesome! Hey, you two! Oh, it's you guys! Long time no see! But you're too late! We, the greatest thieves in the history of the world, already have the Ruby Angel! I had a feeling it was these two who stole it. Please, we need you to give back the Ruby Angel! Not a chance, kid! We stole this thing fair and square! Yep, it's best just accepting to head on back home. <sighs> Jeez, why are they so full of themselves all the time? I think they're just dumb. That must be it, especially if you think they're dumb. Ooh, yep. Wait, guy, are you making fun of me? What makes you think that? Of course not! Uh, I see. I uh, must have misunderstood. <laughs> Decker, you really are quite unique. Uh, anyway, we're getting the statue back whether you like it or not. You really want to get hurt, huh? Well, we do, Birdie. It's on, then! Alright, here we come! The fight will be over when I count to three. Huh? Are they planning some sort of attack or something? Don't worry, I can take any kind of attack. Here we go! One, two, three! <laughs> I knew it. Let's go after them. Looks like we've got more trouble. We'll have to deal with this first, Maxim. Gotcha. First things first, then. I should have no trouble defeating these evil doers. It's time to take out the trash. <sighs> ah, it's time for a boss fight of a sort. How are we supposed to beat a tank? We need to destroy its armor. Not these golden bees. Get out of here. Let's look for something to use. The premise of this battle is pretty simple, really. Once again, the tank is completely immune to your own attacks, so you need to find outside ways to damage it. And by outside ways, I mean throw bombs at it. You have to run around the entirety of the arena going to the four corners where the shutters are. Bombs will be hidden in each one of these rooms, and they'll go along in turn within each room. Clockwise, I think. Basically allow the tank to keep firing at the shutters, pelting them with more anti-armor rounds until they give way and you can grab the bombs inside and then throw them back at the tank. Just keep lobbing bombs at the tank and they'll eventually give way and you'll win the fight. Easy does it. Once again, Guy with the Commando ability is a god in this fight. The tank itself won't be able to damage him, just the Golden Bees. So you can just have Guy go around collecting the bombs and tossing them while he walks up to the anti-armor rounds and acting like nothing is happening to him. Behold the mighty power of Guy, shrugging off anti-armor shells and mortars and not giving a flying fuck. Do not mess with this guy. I imagine what kind of tales he must tell in his kids when this journey is over. Yeah, I walked up to a tank once, took anti-armor shells to the face, they even bruise me. Man, I'm solid awesome. Are you for real, Dad? Of course I am. 
Meanwhile, Jesse is laughing in the background like, oh, that's my guy. <laughs> There we go! Man! That was a heck of a tank! I think it could still move. Hmm. I just had a great idea, Maxim! Let's use the tank! Are you serious, Salon? Can you operate this thing? Piece of cake. Besides, we're in enemy territory, so we need all the protection we can get. You've got a point. Pushing the live button should fire the main cannon. Oh, have you operated a tank 2 guy? Well, no. But I have a feeling that pushing at least one of these buttons will fire the cannon. You seriously telling me that on the ca cannon's console there is a button called Y? Ah, uh, fourth wall. Also, we should use the L and R buttons to rotate the cannon. What? How the heck do you know that, Tia? Uh, call it woman's intuition. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Everybody in! So, uh, this part is awesome? We get to com commandeer the tank. So now we gotta use it to, uh, fight our way out. Now I'm just trying to imagine this entire sequence happening in the original Lufia 2. Just running, just commandeering an entire tank. Just mowing down monsters in a minigame-like fashion. It sounds like something Super Mario RPG would do, honestly. Also, right now, it feels like I'm playing Valkyria Chronicles, so I feel kind of right at home. This is amazing. Now this gets serious, because now there's going to be anti-armor turrets popping up along the way, and they're just going to slow us down. So, now is the time to just show them what's what. Time to pretend I'm playing BC2 again. Just slow down as much as I see. Yeah, take that. That's what that stupid Gatling Bunker mission in UL. Yeah, I'm looking at you. Here! This was for the freaking Batamus chapter. Yeah, Maximilian, how about you suck off? Freaking loser. Gonna have to show off this giant tank everywhere. Okay, can't get more charred nuke there. Now we just gotta bust our way through this. And be greeted by a whole bunch of, bunch of encampments and turrets. Oh god, this is so cathartic. Oh, this, I could do this forever. <laughs> Whoa! What the? There's something beyond that corridor. I have a bad feeling about this. A strong enemy is definitely there, and we can't use the tank. We fire on our own strength. Let's go, Maxim. Yeah. F -f -f Foreshadowing. Hey, look, we've got a safe way. I wonder what this could mean. Oh my stars! What in the name of Northland is that? What the heck is this thing? It's huge! I've never seen a tank this big. This is... not good. Surprised, are ya? This is our ultimate weapon! Ultimate weapon? You probably just stole the thing. Stole? Borrowed? It's all the same. In any case, get ready for a Bertie and Betty beatdown! Now it is time for the real boss battle, Birdie and Betty's Love Machine. This boss battle? Has a lot of really damn good boss banner. A lot of boss banter. You! Handsome! You! Cutie! You! How is that? Not you too, Decker! Please, just shut up, Ever! 
I'll agree with that. So much banter that it's preventing me from talking about the boss battle itself. Here it comes! Galaxy Beam! Though trying to stay away from that Galaxy Beam is pretty obvious anyway. Are you guys done? Really? Good. Anyway, there are miniature turrets placed all over the upper part of this arena. You can fire them at the tank for a consistent one damage. Really, it's meant just to irritate them. What you're really supposed to do is wait for them to fire their missiles at you. By then, you can do one of two things, let them descend to the ground, or knock them back to do damage. Though odds are good they'll probably hit you before they hit the ground. After their love machine takes about four missile shots, the tank will stop moving and Birdie or Betty will pop out. They'll alternate, and you can just climb up to the tank and finally whack the crap out of them. That is how you do the real meat of the damage for this boss fight. I'll show you a good time. You're so cute, Betty. You're getting me excited. Oh, Birdie. For the love of God, Birdie, keep it in your pants! Or at the very least, get a room! Well, I guess the Giga Tank has plenty of room, but you know what I mean! Uh, what the fuck?! Maxim! <laughs> this is not how we do things! And after they get back inside, the fight kind of repeats from there. The frequency of the missile strikes might go up, but other than that, it's more of the same really now. Ah, whatever, I guess I'll just use the Gatling to have them dance. Which one of us is the better gun dancer? Dance for me, boys! Er, Bertie and Betty. We're both boys in the original. Yeah, easy to do that trigger finger there, Betty. You want this whole place to blow up? And again, a tank of that size, I'm surprised it hasn't crashed to the entire floor. I left one big giant wreck in its wake. The floor is probably made out of reinforced titanium. Or zircon. Probably zircon. Okay, so Betty's out of the tank now. I'll just walk up. Maxim. No, that that's not. Try again. As I was saying, I'm just gonna walk up. What the fuck, Maxim? <laughs> that's not how we do it. Freaking jump distance. Ah, now they were covered. Freaking jump distance. Uh. Come on, then, you missiles! God, Christ, Birdie! Now you're now you're trigger happy with the Gatling? Easy. One with the missiles. Next with the Gatling. Can I get some breathing room, please? Oh, thanks. Listen, all I want is to get you two out of that freaking tank. I'm sure if we could talk this out like civilized people, we will not have to resort to whacking each other's with guns, missiles, and swords and sorcery. Please! Some diplomacy is all I'm asking for. A little bit of negotiation could go a long way, you know what I'm saying? Please. You're not gonna listen to reason, are you? thing when they're just small time thieves and next thing you know, wham, we're gonna steal this giant military tank. You'd think Grazi's security clearance would be a little better than this. Or maybe Birdie and Betty are mechanical geniuses and we just don't know that they are. Huh, that's another possibility. Let's go. Rolling attack. There is one constant though. I want this boss fight to be over already. I mean, I love it and all, but jeez, a missed opportunity from earlier is eating at me. And now I shall redeem! Come at me, birdie! I will strike at you! Eh! 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 Yeah, 
Yeah, that'll learn ya. Hmm, let you go this time. We won't be so kind the next time we meet. And they're gone. Whew, that was tough. Well, we got the Ruby Angel back. Let's hurry and give it back to Prince Leon. Yes, let's. And we got the real Ruby Angel now. Here's the real Ruby Angel, Your Highness! Ah, yes, this is the real thing! Well done, Decker! It wasn't just me, everyone helped out as well! I see. Maxim, Salon, Guy, Tia, and Iris. You have my thanks as well. Wow, that's the first time I've ever been thanked by a prince! You look a little abstract there, Tia! <laughs> Knock it off, Guy! Uh, anyway, I'm just glad we were able to get the real Ruby Angel back. What do you plan to do now, your highness? Well, Princess Sia has been invited to the Bound Kingdom. The ship that will take us there should be here soon. Then we can relax on our way there, because you found the Ruby Angel. I'd like to thank you again. It was our pleasure, your highness! When we arrive at the Bound Kingdom, the princess and I will officially announce our marriage. That's great news! Congratulations, your highness! How romantic. Good to hear, prince! Yes, congratulations, Prince Leon. I hope the two of you have a wonderful wedding. Thank you very much, everyone. Wedding should be great! By the way, Decker, did you find anything suspicious about the Grazi Empire? Yes, we did, actually. We found a secret underground weapons factory. I thought so. I've been hearing rumors about that for a while now. Grazi's army's been growing recently. They may be planning to launch an attack, and soon. You might be right. Please continue your investigation, Decker. Yes, Your Highness. Maxim, would you mind helping Decker in his investigation? Not at all, Prince Leon. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. I'm counting on both of you. Understood. I will return to the Bound Kingdom. Please report to me when you have the chance, Decker. So that little subplot's now sorted away. In the original, Birdie and Bart had nothing to do with stealing the icon. It was actually someone else entirely. Just some Dankirk soldier who stole the thing to betray his king, and just so he can get a position of power. Coincidentally becoming a minister for the Grazi Kingdom. Huh, small world. Hmm, I wonder what this wedding ceremony is going to be like. So, did you give the real Ruby Angel to Prince Leon? Yes, now Prince Leon and Princess Thea are going to the Bound Kingdom to officially announce their engagement. Hmm, the world will be much more peaceful once the Prince and the Princess of the two largest countries are united. I should hope so. Are you guys going to the Bound Kingdom too? Prince Leon has invited us, so Let's yes, we plan to go. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I better go get my party hat.